My name's Lucy, so I'm a level three triathlon coach. I coach clients both face to face and with online training plans, um, working with them on run training, so up to marathons or ultra runs. Um, and mostly triathlon is my main area. So through from sprints through to Ironman, whatever, um, and, and anything else in the kind of endurance realm. Um, I today will be talking about some ideas around sports psychology, like I say, some tips and tricks that you can use to try and help you in your training and, you, and in your racing. Um, it's an area I'm particularly interested in. I've been working with my clients on these issues. Well, I, I work with my clients. I have a monthly phone call with them or weekly phone call uh, where we discuss the different issues that they're finding in their training. And I find less and less people want to talk about the nitty gritty of their training, you know, how hard they should be riding on the bike, how far they should be running it, you know, that sort of thing. And it's far more what's going on up here. And particularly when we get to race season, people who have bad races just because they're so nervous at the start, they get into a cycle of negative decision making. They start worrying so much they can't sleep the night before. Um, or when we are onto those, you know, especially the longer distance races, your marathons, your Ironman, half Ironman, either just the pain is too too much to keep on going and people just struggle to motivate themselves to keep on going um, or they just get the feeling of I can't do this I can't do this so more and more I'm finding that the psychological side what's going on up here is as important as the physical training so it's something I'm sort of really passionate about it's something I've been working with lots of my clients on um, and something that I wanted to discuss with you today um, so we're going to start off by there's different areas we'll look at today but universally I think one of the areas that most people tend to um, have issues with is nerves so race day nerves now before I get into that I'll just say I'm going to cover lots of different things today um, not all of them will be relevant to you either in terms of subject area or they just don't kind of work for you I'd say listen to everything that I say and try and identify the most important areas for you. So don't try and take on everything, just choose one, two, three things out of this webinar that you think would work for you. Approach it with an open mind, try them in training. You can't just bring these things to, to use on race day. You have to be thinking about these things, using them in training, practicing and practicing exactly the same as you do with any technique work that you're using in your training. Um, it has to be something that you've practiced, that you're familiar with, that you've adapted to work for you. So use those training sessions just as you would use a long training session to, to practice your race day nutrition. Use it also to practice what's going on in here to get those thoughts where you want them to identify things that might go wrong in terms of your headspace and work out how to get yourself back on track. Um, so with that said, the first area that we're going to look at is nerves. So this could be race day nerves. This could be you've got a big training session coming up that you're worried about. It could be a test. You've got some sort of test in your training plan coming up that you're worried about. All those different things that can start to become almost overwhelming and partly just mean you don't enjoy it, but can also become self-defeating. You feel so nervous that you can't focus on the task or your stomach starts feeling really upset. And then that obviously leads to problems on the race. So first thing to think about with nerves is it's adrenaline you're excited about it that's not a bad thing you know back in the days when we were cavemen you had the choice of fight or flight or freeze you didn't want to freeze because the big hairy bear was going to get you so you needed that adrenaline to get yourself going so don't see it as a negative thing but rather than seeing it as fear maybe try and reframe it as excitement try and reframe it as all your senses are alive you're ready to go um, see it as a privilege you know how many adults get to feel like that kid on Christmas morning or Christmas Eve you know excited about what's to come so see it as a privilege see it as something exciting see it as something rather than butterflies in your belly see it as fire in your belly you're ready to go um, and hopefully that will help to just bring it under control so your stomach starts to become calmer and as I say you start being able to make better decisions rather than being locked into this cycle of just going oh my god I'm so scared I'm so scared I can't think of anything else on the back I'm so scared so see it as a positive thing but then you're still going to be nervous that's absolutely fine first of all think about what is it that you're actually nervous about so we, we get stuck in this cycle of oh my god I'm scared what are you actually worried about so try and write it down or you know think it through but make it tangible what are the things that you're worried about and then once you've got that kind of list of what the things are actually are Think about how bad they really are. So, you know, imagine, and I don't like talking, you know, going into depth on this, but, you know, imagine a really good friend tells you that they're really ill, or, you know, something like that, something really bad's happening, and then weigh it up against that race fear. 
is it really that bad? Yes, you might be worried that you're not going to come first. You're not going to realize your dream or whatever. But actually, in the bad, in the big scheme of things, is it that bad? So let's get some rational thinking going on. First of all, what are you actually scared of? Can you name it? And in the grand scheme of things, get some perspective on it. Is it, is it as bad as you think it is? And if it isn't, then we just need to calm things down. Um, but, you know, that's not to minimise the fact you are going to have fears and you'll have some fears about really, you know, things that are, are valid, things like you're worried that, you know, it's, it's raining, you weren't expecting it to be raining on race day and you're worried that you're going to skid and come off on your bike or you're worried that you're going to get punched on the swim because, you know, there's all these people in the swim together and you get worried you, you don't like open water swimming or you're worried that you're going to forget something that you need for, for your race or whatever. So all these things, they're valid, but rather than just trying to suppress them and just go, oh, my God, I'm scared, but I don't want to think about it. Let's again identify them and then work out what we can do about them. Have a plan to address each of those fears. So if you're worried about skidding on the bike, we can't control the weather. We can't stop it from raining, but we can certainly work on our bike skills. We can make sure that we know how to be able to take a corner and how far we can push that, how fast we can go in. We know how much we need to slow down because we've worked on our cornering skills. Um, we know what tyre pressure we want to have on race day to give us better grip on the road. Um, if you're worried about getting punched on the swim, that's fine. Just start a little bit further back and go a little bit wider around the boy. Um, if you're worried about the fact that you're going to forget stuff, you need a great packing list. Have a list for everything you need. I'm thinking triathlon particularly here because that's when you have so much fat and so many things you need to take. Um, have that packing list. Make sure you go through it and then do a transition training session the week before your race which is going to get you in the zone, is going to get you ready, but it's also going to mean you've ticked through every single thing you need for that race because you've practiced taking it on, putting it off, whatever. So, you know, think through what those tangible fears are and then have that plan to address them. Um, there's still going to be things that you you just can't get rid of. You've still got that fear. You, you know that the course that you're doing, it's got a big steep descent on the bike and you're really worried about going downhill. Well, then you need to tell your brain, you need to show your brain it's not something to be scared of so in the example of that there's being scared of descending you need to find a fairly gentle hill and you need to practice on that fairly gentle hill then you need to practice going a little bit faster then you need to find a slightly bigger hill steeper hill and you need to practice on that so rather than just going in and facing the fear bang on you start off with it manageable you prove to your brain and talk to your brain talk to yourself as if it's a, like a little kid and talk it through what's going on yep you did that fine okay let's go are you happy to go again let's go again let's go a little bit steeper a little bit faster keep on building it up and keep on proving to yourself to to the gremlins in there that you can do this and pro progress it and progress it until you're getting up to the kind of level that you're going to face on race day and then you're able to say that when you're on the start line i've done it 100 times in training i know i can do this now with all of that you're still going to have times where you're standing there on the start line or in the middle of the race and you start getting that panic on and you start getting really scared and you don't know what to do we'll come to some other techniques um, in a bit but i'd say the first thing to start with is just come back to your breathing so you're there you're in a panic you're in transition you realize you've forgotten something that you really needed you're setting up your bike in the morning and you've, you've forgotten the thing that you needed and you go into a panic and then you can't think straight and then you can't deal with the situation so all you need to do is come back to your breathing so i just want you to focus on your breathing take a nice deep breath in and practice it now with me take a nice deep breath in in for two out for two and then again in for two breaths in through the nose and out for two out through the mouth now you're going to do exactly the same but this time as you breathe out i want you to visualize all that tension in your shoulders going so you're coming in for two and then out for two visualizing that stress just relaxing from your shoulders you're going to do the same again in for two out for two and you're just going to relax the fingers let all the tension out the fingers same again in for two out for two all the tension out of your feet and then the last one in for two out for two and visualize your stomach just relaxing so all those knots of fear that are out in your stomach just relax those through you might have other places that you carry tension yourself somewhere you know that you're getting all het up just visualize that out for two visualizing all of that stress leaving your body Go through that ritual. That's only going to take you a few seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Go through that and see if you still feel scared at the end. You've probably forgotten the thing that you forgot in transition, but you've definitely calmed yourself down. And then you're in a place where you can start making rational decisions. It's only going to take a few seconds. So don't be, I haven't got time to do that. I just need to do Just take that time, relax down, be ready to go, and then make your decisions of how you're going to move forwards. 
and then you need a plan for how you're going to deal with the next situation. So that's some ideas for dealing with race day nerves when things all get a bit too much at the beginning of the race or during the race. Taking a step back from that, though, we have times when we struggle to motivate ourselves. That could be that you've got a really hard session coming up and you've seen it on your plan. You know it's going to be a hard session and you really don't want to do it. It could be that you're in the middle of that hard training session and you've still got 30 seconds to go in this interval and you just don't think you can get to the end. It could be that you've got to go out for a long run and all your friends are going down the pub and you'd much rather be there. Or it could be in race day and you are trying to catch up that person in front, but you just don't think you can do it. All of these times, we need something to motivate ourselves. We need to know why we're doing it. So I want you to spend some time thinking about your goal, your main overarching goal. Why are you sitting here watching this right now? What are you training for? And why does that matter to you? So I don't want you just to go, I just want to get to the finish line. Or I just want to you know, do that race because I want to tick it off because my friend said it was fun or something. If you want to make sure you are motivated to do the best you can do in terms of your training, in terms of that racing, you need to go deeper than that. You need to find deep inside you, why does this matter to you? So maybe it is about, I want to cross that finish line. I want to feel I've like succeeded in this race. But is it just that? Or is it that you want somebody, somebody who matters to you, somebody in your life to notice that, that they're there on the finishing line, or you get to call them up and you say, I did that. You know, visualize who you're talking to about this. Visualize who's there watching you cross that finish line. Visualize how it feels, how it feels in here. Go deep in terms of what that feels like, what it smells like, what it, what sounds you can hear. I want you to have a really tangible emotional connection to you succeeding in, in realizing that goal. And that's what you need to come back to each time that you have those doubts that you think, oh, I don't think I can get to the end of this interval or I, don't, I can't be bothered to go training or I really need to push harder, but I don't think I can come back to that root motivation. Why are you doing this? What is this all about? That should be your inspiration. That should be what's helping to drive you. You also need a wider range of goals. So that's your kind of root motivation. That's your right here inside that you're going to come back to. But we need some more specific goals. We've all heard of smart goals. Um, you need some some goals that are, your, that are tangible that you're going to aim for. So I would suggest you want one goal that's your stretch goal. Your I don't know if I can do this, but it would be absolutely amazing if I could. You don't want it to be so far out there that you've got no hope of doing it because then you'll just go, oh, I'll never be able to do that, so I may as well give up. It's got to be something tangible, but it's got to be something that you're going to really, really have to work for. And it's got to be something that you know is a stretch. So you're not beating yourself up if you don't succeed in it. It's a brilliant, it's a, it's amazing if I get there. It's not a be all and end all. I'm absolutely, I've failed in everything if I don't get there. So you've got that stretch goal. Then you want something that's your more realistic goal. You're something that, yes, I think I can achieve this. Now, be ambitious in this as well. Don't just go for the, oh, I'd really like to come, I don't know, top third of the table, but I don't think I can. So I don't want to put that goal there because I'm worried I'll fail. I want you to find a goal that is really going to inspire you, motivate you and push you. So it's got to be realistic, um, but it's got to push you. Um, so you've got your stretch goal. You've got your main goal, your smart goal that you can achieve. But then I'd also suggest you want to add in some pr um, process goals. So how are you going to get there? That could be as simple as I want to make sure I complete every training session this week. It could be I'm really going to focus on my hydration in the two weeks prior to the race. It could be about your diet, making sure that, you know, you've got the strongest body in terms of making sure you're fueling your recovery. All those, and it's not just one thing. It will be lots of things. So think through all those different process goals, all the things that you need to do that are going to help you get to that that main goal that you want. And then you need to realize those goals have to be adaptable. They have to be fluid. In a race situation, my goal might have been to come top third. And then something awful, my goggles come off in a swim and my chain comes off in the bike. And I know that I'm not going to get that top third position that I wanted. I could just DNF, I could walk away from the race then. But personally, I think I'm going to gain more by completing that race, doing the best that I can, learning from it, picking up the training, the training stress that comes from the race but also picking up the learnings and I don't know while I'm out on that course maybe everybody else's chain came off everybody, everybody else lost their goggles or got lost on the swim or whatever so I don't know till I get that finished to the finish line that I haven't I'm not going to be able to meet my goal but I need to be able to adapt my goal because if I'm going I've got top third I've got top third oh my god I haven't got top third I've just been overtaken by half the field okay I've given up now then 
it's game over. I need to carry on being able to reassess, rewrite those goals as I go, so that I'm still striving to do the best that I can on race day. Ditto, that could happen during your training. So it could be, I've got this goal, I'm going to win my local race, brilliant, and then I get really ill and I miss a week, a two week, a month out of training. And that new that goal doesn't look achievable anymore. Again, I could just say, okay, I'm not going to bother with the race or I can do what I can to get the best out of it. So I reset my goal and I go, okay, I'm not going to win the race, but I want to make sure that I come in the top 10, whatever it is. And that is my new goal. So you need to get used to being able to move those goals, change those goals, not giving up on them, not going, oh, it's all got a bit too hard. I think I'm going to downgrade my goal. If you think that goal is still achievable, you stick with that goal. But if it does start to become unachievable, you need to be able to adapt to the changing situation rather than just giving up on it. So that's how we deal with motivation. Then we've got a kind of general area of dealing with negative feelings or building positive feelings. So as human beings, we are going to have about 80,000 thoughts a day. And generally, not everybody, but most people, those are going to be predominantly negative feelings. So studies show that about 80% of the feelings going through our mind are going to be fairly negative. And that's because, again, going back to our caveman days, we weren't geared for thriving. We were just geared for survival. We're looking out for threats. We're not looking how to make the best out of things. But we also know that if we have a negative frame set, we tend to not get the best out of things. If we go into something going, I don't think I can do this, I think this is going to be awful, chances are we create a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy and it, we don't complete it and it is awful. If we can turn that on our head, if we can go in with a positive attitude and say, I'm going to get the best out of this that I can, then we're going to have more positive training session. That's going to lead to greater gains in terms of our fitness. On race day, if we're going at it with a positive mindset, then we can take that through. We're going to be more positive in terms of the outcomes that we get. So the first thing we need to do is catch ourselves. Now, just as an experiment, tomorrow or whatever, just do a little self-analysis on all the thoughts that go through your brain, particularly if you've got a hard training session coming up. Just think through how many, how many negative thoughts, do a little tally you know, um, in your brain of how many negative thoughts you have throughout the day, day and how many positive thoughts. And I bet you most of them are negative. And if they're not, you're a really lucky person. You're already in a really good place, but we can always build on that. Um, but they're probably mostly negative and see how that then colors your judgment. You've seen a negative thing, you've already gone into something negatively, you then, because you're looking for that bad thing, you see the next bad thing. Whereas if you start to turn it on its head, we can create that more positive cycle. So first thing is to catch yourself. You're in a race situation or you're in a training situation, maybe you've got a horrible training session coming up that night, and you start going, I can't do it, I can't do it, it's gonna be horrible, it's gonna hurt, and I can't do it. Catch yourself. So before we get into that cycle of self self fulfilling, we have to catch ourselves and realize that we're doing it. That's the first thing. That's probably the hardest thing to do. So that's going to take practice. So keep working on that throughout the day. It doesn't have to just be related to training, but catch yourself each time you have a negative thought and see what you can do to move on from that. Now, what you don't want to do is just suppress it. You don't want to just go, Shh, I can't hear that negative thought. You know, if you've ever been cycling along the road and you've seen a bug or something in the middle of the road or a butterfly and you don't want to run over the butterfly and you're looking at the butterfly, you go straight into the butterfly. Similarly, if I say to you right now, don't think about a pink elephant. You've all got a pink elephant in your brain, right? So we don't want to try and suppress it. We want to acknowledge it. We want to say, yes, negative thought, I've heard you. Um, but then we want to use a technique called grounding to bring ourselves back. So that could be uh, you're on the start line, you're nervous, or it could be everything's really hurting. It could be you just going, I don't think I can do this, I don't think I can do this. You feel that thought, you hear that thought coming through, you go, yes, I've acknowledged you. And then we're going to try and ground ourselves. So it could be, we want, we want to come back to our five senses. It could be pinching, it could be flicking, it could be just squeezing our fingers together. So something sensory like that. It could be take a drink of your water or of your energy energy drink or whatever and really focus on that flavor. Be aware of that flavor. It could be just noticing the color. Notice all the orange that you can see in front of you, my favorite color. Um, something that takes you out of that thought process and just grounds you into one of your five senses, just brings it back to that most simple thing. Then we've grounded ourselves. Then we're able to move on. We're able to process and we're able to think what we do next. Um, 
it could just be as well so we've talked about kind of whether it's um, that you're nervous whether it's doubts coming in whether it's negative thoughts but it could also just be that noise you know if you're doing a long race a marathon or a you know an Ironman even even a, a triathlon you know you're out there for quite a long time and it's easy for that brain to start to wander and we're thinking about what we're gonna have for dinner and we're thinking about this and we're thinking about that we just want to bring it back so we're using one of those five senses just to bring ourselves back into the present then, but we can take it further than that. So rather than just kind of grounding ourselves and, and trying to move on from that negative thought, we can actually try and build positive thoughts. So think through a race that you've got coming up. And I use a triathlon as an example again. Think through all the points that you're worried about, the things that are worrying you, either because you're nervous, like say you're worried about the swim, getting punched on the swim, or you're worried about having an accident on the bike, or just things where you know it's really going to hurt. So by the time you get onto the run, oh, my really going to hurt I don't know if I can keep on going think through those points where you think you're going to have issues and then think through a positive mantra or some positive self-talk that you're going to use at each point of that race so taking the triathlon as an example you want to just make sure you're in that positive zone you're not having those negative thoughts coming in so it could be something like bubble bubble breathe those of you who do bilateral breathing so just breathing out under the water bubble bubble and then breathe bubble bubble breathe or it could be reach and roll something that you use something that's meaningful to you something that is relevant to things you need to work on your technique but something that's just going to ground you keep you focused on that action um could be when you get onto the bike thinking about keeping a nice pedal stroke so keeping that smooth pedal stroke 360 degrees rather than just push 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 you want to keep that circle think about making smiles with your feet something that just keeps you working through on the run, run tall, so trying to keep that nice tall neck, or thinking about driving the arms, something fairly focused, but simple that you can just keep on using to keep yourself focused in the moment. It could be as simple as counting, count your strokes, count your footsteps, just keep on going, counting up to 10, counting up to 10, something again to ground yourself. So those are the more technique focused. Then you might also want to do some more sort of positive self-talk. So it can be as simple as I can do this or, or a positive song that, you know, you have going through your mind that's really going to get you going. Something that's motivating to you, you saying to yourself, yes, I can do this. And again, not letting those negative thoughts taking over. And then you want to put it all together. So some people talk about visualize that whole course and assign each of those key messages to somebody who matters to you, who you're going to visualize standing at those key points on the course. So in the swim, your swim coach is there standing out on a, on, on a canoe on the swim course, and they're saying that thing that you need to focus on in your swim. On the bike, your, your partner's there, they're waving you on, they're saying that thing to you. When you're getting onto the run and everything's just aching and you feel like your whole body's giving up, somebody who you've worked on some strength and conditioning, they're giving you that powerful advice to keep yourself strong. Add in some quotes that you've heard from um, that you've heard from uh, sports people talking. You know, um, Jens Voigt is famous for "shut up legs." It could be something like that. Just keep those different references in there. Things that you're going to plan along along the course to keep yourself motivated and to keep yourself focused and then run through that. So with the visualization, whether you're using the people on the course or whether you're just thinking of those different messages you're going to use, run through that whole course again and again in your training, in your mind, thinking through each of those key points, thinking through when you insert those key mantras to yourself, those positive thoughts, whether they're technique or whether they're self-belief, think through, visualize, keep visualizing. Um, now, there's different sort of theories on visualization. Some people say, you know, you want to keep that visualization really positive. You just want to be thinking through a positive race and, you know, imagining the best race you can do. I'd suggest that you also need to have some rationale or some rational thought and some sort of dealing with issues in there as well. You know, you might have that really positive race visualized and that's all great until you go out and you get that flat on the bike course or something. So you need to know how you're going to deal with that. So you're going to use your visualization to put in those positive messages, messages those mantras but also working through those things you're worried about and how are you going to deal with them don't focus on them don't spend the whole time just going oh my god i'm going to get a flat i'm going to get a flat but in that visualization go okay so i've got a flat i'm going to get off the bike i'm going to put the bike to the side i'm going to get my puncture repair kit out and walk through that process in your mind so if it happens on race day 
you just do it. It's easy. It's not something that's going to phase you. Use those long sessions you've got, whether it's long turbo sessions, long easy runs, you know, your long boring sessions. Use them to keep on running through these things so that it just feels natural on race day. Now, we couldn't go through this whole thing without talking about mindfulness. It's obviously the big buzzword. Um, it's not something I'm going to talk you through how to do. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to talk you through how to do mind mindfulness. But I would say it's a really, really useful skill. I think a lot of people get freaked out by mindfulness and go, oh, it's such an all encompassing thing. I need to spend hours meditating every day. and I just don't have the time to do that. Firstly, I'd say if you get good at mindfulness, it means you will have more time in your life because you're going to spend less time getting bogged down in negative thoughts that aren't going anywhere so it's going to make you more productive but also don't make it a bigger thing than it needs to be it can just be that process mindfulness basically just means being aware of and accepting your thoughts so spending some time getting in contact with your thoughts and getting used to calming down being aware of those thoughts and dealing and accepting them you can make that a big process or a short process but give it a go there's obviously loads of um, resources out there headspace or all of the other kind of online apps that you can use um this book and i'll put it in the notes i found this really useful and um, just talks you through really in a simple way step by step how you can do the do the different steps and then there's a cd that goes with it which you can just listen to so go on your own journey of exploration on that but don't discount it before you've given it a go um it's going to help you just find that calmness to come back to and be able to deal with your thoughts rather than having them racing out of control now the other one that people roll their eyes at which i'll just um, touch on as well when we're talking about building those positive thoughts building a more positive attitude to life i mean this is about everything but particularly from this perspective from your training is a gratitude journal now again you can buy your little gratitude journals that have special headings and have nice little pretty things on the front cover up to you if you want to go down that route go for it but otherwise just get a notebook or do it on your phone whatever i just want you to start off at the end of the day thinking of one thing that you are grateful for keep it related to training but it doesn't have to be oh, i had an ftp increase of 100 watts or whatever it could just be the birds were singing when i went for my run this evening and that was really lovely find something positive in the day to be grateful for and that's it acknowledge it write it down and that's it if after doing that for a few weeks you're finding it a positive process and you want to take it further you can then start going into more depth having different questions to add in there more of a structure to it but for now just to get started just every day find one thing to be grateful for to be happy about and move on so that's dealing with the kind of building the more positive emotions and um, dealing with negative emotions. Then one final thing, and I'll say the one final thing, but anybody who's on the call right now, please do, if you've got questions that you want me to answer, start, start typing them in. Um, and then when I get to the end of me talking, then I can answer any of your questions. So please do have a, have a think if you've got questions and start typing them in now. Um, but the final thing, which is a nice thing to, or it's a typical thing to end with, is evaluation. So you've got this race coming up, or even a big block of training, um, or your race season. You know, a lot of people are getting towards the, the end of their race season right now. Spend some time evaluating. Now, I know we're all bored of doing that in whatever job we do. We spend all our time evaluating and stuff. Um, you can make this as long or as short as you want. But what I would say is think through what went, what went well and what you could improve on. Now, you can break that down. So with my athletes, I get them to fill in a post-race evaluation. We look through different things, whether it's nutrition, uh, pacing, kits, all the different things that kind of go into that race and think through what went well and what you could improve on. But what I would stress is don't just move straight onto that. What could I improve on? Really spend some time thinking on what went well. Acknowledge what you have done. And then at the end of that, and you can make up your own heading, but I would say, three things you are most proud of that you achieved in this. You might not have met your goal. You might not have met that stretch goal. You might not even have met that realistic goal, but you still achieved a hell of a lot by being on that race course, doing that race. So think through three things that you think you are proud of that you have achieved in the course of, like I say, whether it's the race, the racing season, whatever, and spend some time giving yourself a pat on the back for that. So those are the main things that I wanted to cover anybody who wants to type anything in please do if you've got questions feedback whatever um i've received one question um by email so i'll go through that so somebody was asking 
um, and somebody I work with, so we've already been through kind of dealing with those specific fears and making that list of, of um, what you're scared of and then how to approach it, how to break it down and how to deal with that. Um, but I think all of us can probably identify with this. It's that slightly non-specific fear, but you get there on race day and it just looks like everyone's better than you. Everybody's got flashy kit. Everybody's walking around looking like they know what they're doing. And you've done all your prep. You've done all your, I've got my head in the right place. And then you turn up to that race and you suddenly go, oh my God, everybody else is better than me. And how to deal with that. Um, and I think the first thing is to, and it's obvious and we all know it, but we all get freaked out by it anyway, is to acknowledge that shiny kit does not mean you are a good racer. You can have the most, you know, uh, what do you call it, the glasses, mirrored glasses, looking really cool, walking around with all your funky kit, doesn't mean you know how to use it. I've been on countless races where I've been on my old, what is now my commuting bike, I've overtaken all the boys in their silly pointy helmets and everything. It, having good kit doesn't mean that you know how to use it. Um, similarly, I get to a race and everybody's clipping their shoes in so that they can do a flying mount. I don't do a flying mount, I practiced it, I don't like it. I don't think I'm any faster doing the flying mount, but every race I get to, I see everybody getting their elastic bands out, putting the shoes on the bike, and I go, oh no, everybody else doing the flying mount, they must all be best of me, oh my gosh, change my race tactics now. And I've learned, I think I've got there now, I know I'm faster without it. And I see, you know, I've watched other races and I'll see those people with their shoes on and I'll see them half an hour down the road still trying to get the shoe into the, their foot into the shoe. Um, so, you know, you know from experience, just because they look cool, they look like they know what they're doing, it doesn't mean they necessarily do. But anyway, some of them will be faster than you. That's absolutely fine. Remember, go back to your goals. Was your goal to win the race? If it was, fine. But if it wasn't, maybe that person is going to beat you. That is fine. You are there to race your race. So go back to what you know. Go back, think through that training diary. Think through all the sessions that you've done. Know that you are in a good place to be doing this race and go back to what your goal is doesn't matter about anybody else on that course you need to do the best race that you can do so forget about everybody else forget about their shiny kit and think about how you can put yourself in the best place to do your best race right any questions no in that case i'll probably leave it there but if you have other questions pop them onto onto the um facebook uh onto a feel fit with lucy and then i'll i'll endeavor to answer those on there um if you have found the video useful either if you're watching it live or if you're watching it in the future please do like it um if you're interested in future content then if you um like the feel fit with lucy page then you'll get notifications for upcoming content share with your friends uh let me know any feedback and i look forward to seeing you on another webinar soon oh i've just had a question come up one second um if so the question is, have you got any techniques for, for hitting reset on the psychology if you build up a negative mental connection? So are you meaning there that you've just got yourself into that kind of cycle of um, you've, you've started thinking negatively and you've just kind of got yourself into that cycle? I don't know if you can hear me, Nikki. <laughs> Well, I'll answer it based on that. So I don't know if you were there at the beginning of the call when I was talking about those grounding techniques. I think the most important thing is when you've got yourself into that negative cycle is to recognise that you've got yourself into that negative cycle. So before you go into that, ah, everything's going wrong, to start recognising that that's what's happening and use some of those grounding techniques. So whether that's the pinching yourself just to bring yourself back to the present, whether it's using that breathing, um, whether it's um, just focusing on on taste, you know, put something into your mouth and just go, OK, I can taste that. What are all the flavours I can taste? Just taking yourself out of that negative cycle and just bringing yourself back to the present, bringing yourself, grounding yourself in the present. Um, that would be your sort of first step for the reset. And then from then onwards, it's about using those positive mantras or even just the uh, sort of more technique focused mantras to help yourself move on. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading Nikki's next uh, comment. So this, oh, so this is something you know. So I hope you don't mind me sharing, Nikki. You sort of had a bad experience. You you felt sick on a race, and now you're kind of worried each time you get there that you're kind of going back into that. You you start sort of bringing that feeling back, and you're worried that you're going to go back to that same thought again. I think that's more about teaching yourself that it's not going to happen so it's about that facing the fears not suppressing the fears but facing the fears but 
proving to yourself on a slow step-by-step -step basis that it's going to be okay so you don't want to take yourself right back to that really scary or the, the situation that most scares you you want to build up to it so um, rather than going straight back to that situation with all those other people just go out with a few people um, then maybe go out with a lot more people but on a really easy run where you're not feeling under so much pressure and each time you're telling your brain you're proving to your brain that you can do this so you've taken that really big scary situation and you've broken it down into a, the sort of least scary version of it and then you just build up from there making it a little bit harder a little bit harder a little bit more challenging each time but each time proving to your brain that you can do this and i was sort of talking through imagine you're talking to a small child so talking to that small child and saying look we just did that Are you happy to go again we're going to do it a little bit harder now I'm with you, I'm supporting you, but we can do this. Proving to yourself that you can do it um, and keep on building up until you get to that sort of ready to take on that bigger, sort of the scarier situation. Does, does, that, does that answer your question?